Good day, everybody. This is Chris with The Ancient Scholar. I hope this video finds you all doing well. Today, I'm going to be reviewing a short case study followed by a 12 lead ECG. And this 12 lead ECG is going to demonstrate a finding that is critical for us to identify. This finding can often be very subtle and may be overlooked and may result in inappropriate treatment in poor outcomes in patients that are experiencing this specific condition. So uh, I hope you all enjoy what we're going to cover and I hope you find it clinically relevant and helpful for your practice. Case study when diagonal is proximal to the problem. Here's the case. You're called to the scene of a 68 year old female complaining of acute onset retrosternal chest pressure while out working in the garden. So this is a 911 call. Uh, she developed a sudden onset chest pressure uh, while out working, stopped working. The uh, pain or discomfort that uh, she had continues, and the 911 system is contacted. Uh, we make our initial contact, and uh, she's awake, alert, oriented, and denies dyspnea. Uh, we get some basic history. She reports having history of elevated cholesterol and hypertension. Uh, so taking in the history and presentation into consideration, we immediately uh, move on to getting a 12 lead ECG on this particular patient. And here's the following ECG. The ECG, the original ECG has actually been um, digitized uh, with the amazing uh, PM uh, cardio app that's uh, for educational uh, content uh, developed by Dr. Robert Herman et al. So what do we notice here? When we take a look at this ECG, uh, we notice a couple of things. Uh, so if you look at lead one here, you notice that there is a little bit of elevation. So there's some ST elevation in lead one. Uh, we look at lead two here and we see that you've got some ST depression. And you see in lead three, you've got fairly substantial ST depression and you've got some depression in AVF. So you have ST depression in the inferior leads. Now that may be due to ischemic changes in the inferior leads or that also may be due to uh, reciprocal changes uh, to perhaps some elevation in other areas of the heart. All right, so we've got some elevation in lead one there. We've got some depression in the inferior leads. And if we move over here to AVL, augmented vector left, we've got a little bit of elevation there as well. All right, moving on. Uh, AVR is not super relevant to this particular uh, case. Well, let's move on to the precordial leads. If we look at the precordial leads, we've got a little bit of elevation in V2. That's interesting because V2 is actually not contiguous with 1 in AVL, right? 1 in AVL is looking at the lateral wall. The V2 is, is uh, looking more at the, uh, the septal wall. Uh, so it's not contiguous. That's kind of a strange thing to see. Uh, V4, V5, and V6, you all have a little bit of depression there. Um, but I want to focus primarily on what we're finding here in leads 1, 3, AVL, and V2. And you can see that these findings kind of, if we superimpose on top of them, they kind of make like a Y, like a Y on its side. All right, so I've got some elevation in lead 1 some elevation in AVL, some elevation in V2, and the most pronounced depression in lead three. And what is going on here? Well, what's going on here is this patient is having an acute coronary syndrome, and they're having a very special kind of acute coronary syndrome. They're having an acute coronary syndrome um, involving the high lateral wall. Uh, the high lateral wall is viewed by looking at leads 1 and AVL. So this is a high lateral wall um, OMI, or acute uh, occlusive myocardial infarction. And we know that the leads that are 
reciprocal to the lateral wall are the inferior leads, particularly lead three here. And you're also getting a little bit of bleed over elevation in uh, lead V2. And this constellation of findings on the ECG is sometimes referred to as the South African flag sign. The South African flag sign. And the South African flag sign is called that because there is a Y like stripe in the middle of the South African flag. Um, and so I just want you to remember elevation in one, elevation in AVL, elevation in V2, and depression in three. And that constellation, even if the findings are subtle, in this particular case, the findings are not as subtle, but even if the findings are subtle, this suggests a, an acute coronary syndrome that requires emergent reperfusion therapy. And then this is a diagram from uh, a Life in the Fast Lane, and you can see uh, where I've referenced them here showing that. That green Y on its side is constellation of elevation in 1, elevation in AVL, elevation in V2, and depression, maximal depression in 3. Those are referred to collectively as a South African flag sign. And these can be very subtle. And even if you see subtle elevation and depression that may not meet traditional STEMI criteria, this would still be criteria for cath lab activation as this would be uh, an occlusive myocardial infarction. And so where does this come from? Well, it comes from, looking at the relevant anatomy here, it comes from an occlusion of the first diagonal artery, or the D1 artery. And so just to orient you, here is the aortic valve. So the left ventricle is pumping blood out of the aortic valve, and it is supplying on the right side the RCA, and it branches out into the nodal and the acute marginal. and and goes down to the right ventricle and so on. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus here on the left coronary artery. You've got the left main and it bifurcates into the circumflex here and the proximal LAD right here. And we typically associate the circumflex artery with being the primary artery that feeds the lateral wall of the left ventricle. But the first diagonal artery that comes off of the LAD, so the LAD goes across the front of the heart like that, and it's the proximal, the middle, and distal LAD, and on either side of the LAD you have the septals coming off on this side and the diagonals coming off on this side, and that first diagonal branch of the LAD in fact feeds into the lateral wall or very high up on the lateral wall. And at, when you have compromise or acute occlusion of that artery, that can result in the high lateral wall myocardial infarction. And that produces the classic South African flag uh, sign findings of, again, just think of this Y on its side where you get elevation in one, elevation in AVL, elevation in V2, and depression, maximal depression in lead 3. All right, everyone. I hope you found this uh, particular case study and presentation helpful, and I will see you all in the next video.